I remember being a kid. I can see that happening. That's oh, always, always something to do. The Unlaced. Unlaced podcast. It's actually not bad. <laughs> and we're live. Uh, quick acknowledgement. Thank you, everyone, to all the listeners, the subscribers, everyone out there. We do it every week, but we do appreciate your support. Um, I just wanted to talk about today because today's a big episode. Anyone who knows me has been listening to the Unlaced podcast. They know that I'm a Saints fan. And they know that I'm a heartbroken Saints fan at times, which is going to make this episode very interesting because we are with a bit of a Saints legend that's changed the guard and changed parts of, of late. Um, but we have Luke Dunstan in the studio. Luke Dunstan, mate, it's a pleasure. How are you going? I'm well, thanks, mate. Thanks for having me. No, absolute pleasure. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of this story, but we did have a run-in in Bali maybe five, six years ago where our relationship developed and I felt like we built a rapport there because... Uh, we bonded. Yeah, yeah, we bonded because you, you lost a bet and let's say the bet was a bit um, bit strenuous on you and I got you out of some trouble and it was, uh, you know, I feel like now we know each other. <laughs> <laughs> on an intimate level. Yeah. <laughs> on an intimate level, that's right. Um, but no, mate, it's been um, been a bit of a crazy few weeks for you. Um, so I guess I guess how's that been for you? How's the, how's the last few weeks settled with you? Um yeah, well, pretty much as you said, it's it, yeah, it's been a bit of a whirlwind, been a bit crazy, but um, like we were talking off air, you know, when you you sort of went through what you went through when you were finished, and there's uncertainty and um, all that sort of things, it it did it um, at times sort of start to become a bit more of a reality, and just the uncertainty around not knowing if I was going to be moving, if I was going to be getting anywhere, like you know, you just don't know, so. Yeah, been a bit crazy, but um, couldn't be happy with the result. Yeah, I bet. I bet probably like a bit of a relief as well, in, in a sense, right? Because not only are you at a great club, but like you just the just to end that space of like, okay, now you, now you you're settled. Yeah, hundred percent. I think I was. I kind of explained it. I was on the phone to my cousin when I was telling him the news, and sort of just spoke about. Hasn't it didn't really get to like a really stressful level where I was, you know, freaking out, but it was just sort of because I knew most of the year that I wasn't going to be staying um, like mild stress for a long time and I think yeah. it, it did sort of um, yeah it did sort of build up and like when it all sort of happened and went through I was I was pretty exhausted for a couple of days but yeah as I said I couldn't be happy with the uh, with the end result and um, it's been an awesome couple of weeks I, I getting imagine. to know a few of the boys. I can imagine we're going to go into that and we're obviously going to go into the history because as I've just stated and I think you are I'm a Saints fan right so I'm fucking gutted. <laughs> like, I am gutted. And, um, like, the Saints have a have a history, and, and obviously for you, I think you have a great history with the Saints, which I'm sure you're probably really proud of because your first AFL club, you played over 100 games there, um, which is pretty special. But, I mean, I just, just to come to... And we'll obviously go through the Saints story because you've got so much history there and you are a fan favourite or, or were a fan favourite as such, but... What we touched on is you know, the statement of, of Luke there just being settled and, and meeting some of the boys. He's now become a Melbourne Demon and couldn't have, couldn't have thought of a better club to go to from a performance point of view and a bit of a status point of view after they've just won the flag. But how, how did that opportunity arise and, and was there some alternatives to that that could have maybe eventuated that you were pretty close to taking? Um, certainly did. Like it, it came up um, pretty late just because they, they were still playing in the grand final, obviously, with... Um, the Bulldogs. So essentially what teams do is when they sort of finish, they'll sit down and go through all their lists and what their needs and, and you know, what they want to go after. Um, and I'd sat down with my manager and we never sort of picked Melbourne as a team that was sort of um, going to be a candidate. So we had sort of narrowed it down to probably two opportunities and and then I was actually on the golf course just after it had um, opened back up and I was talking about teeing up another phone call um, with a uh, head coach and my manager just kind of threw it in at the end. He goes, oh, by the way, Melbourne want to uh, meet with you on Monday. So it, it all happened pretty quickly. They um, then presented to me over Zoom and, um, wow. yeah, I was really impressed by it all and things uh, moved, yeah, pretty quickly after that. So Did that, when you say they presented, like what, what did they, what like when they, when you say that, what do you mean exactly? Um, so basically... It was uh it was very professional. They had basically just a um, PowerPoint presentation that wow. obviously because it was <laughs> they booed um, <laughs> you. Yeah, they did. They did. Yeah. Um, because it was over Zoom and all the yeah. obviously with COVID and everything. But um, yeah, they screen shared the PowerPoint presentation and just sort of um, I guess took 
took me through why they wanted me and um, made me feel a bit of love, which was something I probably haven't had for a little while. So it was a good yeah. feeling. And um, and yeah, they even they were cropping cropping my head into oh, they did not. jumpers and stuff. It was, it was, <laughs> That's unbelievable. <laughs> it was a bit of a laugh. Were they still funny. in WA at this point? Was this like are they uh, were they, were they uh, back in Melbourne? Most of them. At- I think it was a bit of both. I think they'd mostly just gotten back to Melbourne. Okay. Um, and then. Yeah, so we went through that and within yeah, two or three days I, I was in at the footy club and signed and right. um, yeah, it all happened pretty quick. So it was, so it was just like a good feeling from the get-go. You kind of probably knew initially. Yeah, know, yeah, absolutely. Um, and yeah, at the end of the day, like I wasn't going to have to move. I wasn't going to have to yeah. move stage, houses, anything. Yeah. Um, so logistically it made sense and um, yeah, just in terms of what, they spoke about what they were valuing at the the footy club. Um, yeah, it was really just a bit of a no-brainer for me in the end. Did you have other clubs that you can maybe state or just other clubs in general contact? I assume, like for me, most clubs should have been chasing you for your experience and age, but were, were you sort of close before Melbourne came in to, to jump in somewhere else? Um, yeah, I'd, I'd, yeah I'd, I'd spoken to a couple of other clubs um, and, yeah, I, it was probably looking like maybe Gold Coast... Um, we're going to be the one, but then, yeah, it, it all sort of turned around pretty late. So, mate, it's pretty, pretty crazy. I think for what's interesting to me, and I'd be you know, obviously want to get your opinion of, it, even though you're an established AFL player, you've been in the system for what seven, nearly eight years or whatever. Is it still is it daunting going into a new club, like a new environment, because you're so used to just the one set up, the one structure, walking through the same doors at RCA Park every day? Like, is it is that scary for you, or are you you're at a point um, now where not so much? Uh, not so much now. I, I mean. The boys have been awesome over the last couple of weeks. Um, I've been training with a group of them and leaving the Saints, what you spoke about, being there for however long it was, seven, eight years, the change is something that I'm really excited for and, yeah. you know, maybe 5% a little bit nervous about it. But at the end of the day, like, by the by the end of the time at the Saints, I was walking through the doors and kind of didn't want to be there and mm. um, the motivation had sort of gone. So for me to have that back and I feel totally refreshed as a person and as a player. So, um, yeah, I feel like I'm, I'm in a really good state to to now want to improve and, and, and work really hard. Well, mate, now that I hear that, even though I'm a Saints fan, I am truly happy for you because I think um, why and, and I think all Saints fans will agree we're pissed off because we've developed Luke Dunstan into an absolute superstar and he was always going to be. But the Demons are going to get the best years out of him. And I think the Demons have won out in this one and they picked up a good one. But if we wind the clock back a little bit, you're a South Australian boy, aren't you? Yeah, correct. So what's your sort of background there? Who are you playing for there um, through your childhood, junior career? It's funny you bring that up. Um, I actually grew up playing – I'm was i from the Clare Valley. Okay. Um, a few nice reds. I was going to say, that wine district? It is. It's, it's That's good That's why you've got territory. an acquired taste, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um no, we – so there's a um, two teams in Clare and then obviously the surrounding teams, but um, there's a South Clare and a North Clare and I I played for South Clare um, and they were the Demons. So ah, it's, uh, it's kind of worked out pretty funnily in the end that, um, yeah, hopefully I'll be pulling the uh, Demons jumper back on um, shortly. That's pretty crazy. So, so you've gone through your pathway um, playing footy in South Australia, which is obviously an elite environment. I mean, anyone that's been around – uh, Adelaide and I actually used to play soccer in Adelaide, so I know how big footy is there. But um, you got picked up in 2013 in the draft by St Kilda. Um, at a, I think you went pick 18 or something, which from memory the Saints actually traded for that pick. So, um, like, how was that moment for you? How did that come about? Were you sort of in contention to go other other places? Like, was it nervy coming to Melbourne? Um, uh, I mean, well, coming from SA and going through all the pathways, like, I mean, if you're going to get drafted there's a high chance that you're going to have to move somewhere. So I'd, I'd sort of come to terms with that. And I wasn't really a person who got too homesick or anything. Um, I, would, I was, you know, pretty happy to embrace the change. But the, yeah, the whole sort of way along, like weeks out of the draft, um, my manager was pretty confident that, the yeah, it was going to be Saints. Okay. Um, yeah. Pick 18 was the sort of the first club that we'd sort of gotten okay. to confidence from. So... Yeah, I had an idea, but until yeah, you obviously 
go through it and you don't know what's going to happen. So. Mate, it must be just like I always think of that day as like what that must, what's going through players' heads. Like your life is dictated by a phone call on a day, and it's just crazy, crazy to me. Not many other sports are like that, especially in this country. I think AFL is one of the only ones that there's like a draft. Yeah, it's quite yeah. big in America. But going in the um, top twenty of like any draft, and particularly the AFL, it's a huge achievement. Right, and one thing that, and particularly you'll relate to because you're closer to the sport, and and obviously me coming out of it, like an, a lot of players that are highly regarded at a young age or go in the top twenty, they don't play over a hundred games like you have, right? So I kind of just want to, and and they're obviously all talented. So I kind of just want to get your perspective of like, where's the gap there? Like, what what is it? Is it a mental? Is it a mentality thing? Is it about adapting to the AFL system? Is it just luck? Like, what do you think's key to kind of having a steady career and and I guess, a stabilised career in the, in the profession? Um, oh, it's a hard question. I mean, it's probably a number of things. It might be with some guys' talent where maybe they just didn't have enough talent. They didn't – the recruiters, you know, saw something that wasn't there or whatever <laughs> yeah. it is. But They, they stuffed up completely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, which can happen. But then, like, uh, yeah, there's obviously the, the side of it from – the players still got to want to work hard and improve and, yeah. and better themselves and um, – the biggest thing I've struggled with in, in my career was just going through all the junior things. I was was able to go through the preseason and end up getting picked for round one. It might have not even been until year three where I got dropped for the first time and it, the whole thing for me was just a massive sense of embarrassment and that was the biggest thing that I've I've had to deal with. And um, I've, I spoke to you off air about Emma Murray, you know, telling me I'm still a person. You don't change as a person. It's got yeah. nothing to do with that. So I don't obviously know you personally, but just from afar... When I look at your statistics, I always had this feeling you were quite mentally tough because you played a lot of games, like every season from when you were drafted, you played a lot of games almost every year up until the last year or two. But I always look, from my experiences, I always look at players when they go back into the twos and the threes to see how they bounce back because I went through a lot of that and I just self-imploded because I'm like, I don't want to play here. Like for you, who wants to play? Uh, Sandy Zebra's on a windy Sunday and bounce back in, but you always had good games. So... My interest was is like when you get dropped in the AFL system, particularly at St Kilda, a bloke's coming around you, putting her arm around you, trying to sort of pick you back up, say play well this week. What's that like? Um, from my experience, there's, there's probably not enough of it. Um, and that was something I did struggle with. Like I, I would obviously speak to my close mates, um, but all I just wanted was basically just come on, give you a pat on the back and say like, you'll be fine, mate. Yeah. Whatever. Um, but yeah, there probably wasn't enough of it, and uh, and I know it's hard because everyone just does get caught up in themselves and their own career and worrying about preparing for that week's game and whatever else. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I th I think I've probably shown this year, for me personally, I'm I've probably shown the most ad adversity, uh, mental toughness, um, with the, what I went through this year. Mm. Um, I, I basically knew at the start of the year I wasn't going to be playing, um, given that the guys that we'd sort of gotten in and I knew that basically I was pretty much last on the pecking order. Um, and you still played, played, what, 12 games? And then, yeah, l lucky, like I was lucky. Like, luckily, a few things fell my way with injury. and um, I, I, But I think at one point it was – I can't remember exactly how far into the year, but we well, maybe um, – four or five rounds into the AFL season and the VFL season had just started and um, I played a game at Port Melbourne and I think I had 49. The boys, <laughs> the boys came out, got absolutely pumped and I didn't get a word from anyone all week and I was kind of like, oh, Jeez. Where, where am I at sort of thing. So I basically got on the front foot and um, wanted to speak to the coaches and just have, basically just have an open and honest and – basically just see where I'm at so I can actually go and, you know, that way I know and I where can stop stand. getting my hopes up each week and, and whatever else. So basically we had that we had that conversation and um, I think I think that week, I, I could be wrong, but from memory we, we had about five blokes to pick from that weren't either injured or, or not playing. So I then had that conversation was basically told, yep, um, Basically, what I thought. You're last in the pecking order. We're not sort of going to play you. Wow. Oh, yeah. um, and in a way, like I, uh, that was a bit of a sense of relief in in some sense because I I could I knew then that I could just all right, I don't have to worry about that. 
I'd, all I can focus on now is just playing good footy right. in the VFL. So that helps you in a sense. So in, in a, a way, sense, yeah, the, the honesty and the clarity, yeah, actually, yeah. was that, uh, able to actually help me. So I went out and played that week um, and, yeah, it was a bit of a stressful week. I'd been through a bit of um, personal stuff as well that I was dealing with and I sat down with the VFL coach. I think we might have had our first win for the year and um, I sat down in the rooms with the VFL coach afterwards and <laughs> had a bit of a chat with him and, like, I ended up getting a bit emotional and sort of it all got to me. Um, but from that point on, I I, I probably felt better. Yeah, just better about everything. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> the fact that I'd gotten through that, I was still able to play a good game of footy, even though I was pretty knackered and mm. didn't have a lot of uh, energy. But, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, obviously got lucky enough that guys weren't performing and eventually I got, got my opportunity and... Um, yeah, was able to play some reasonable footy through the middle of the year. And, um, yeah, I, I just think for getting through that, if I was to have even finished up this year, um, I, I would have been had a sense of satisfaction out of what I was able to achieve this year. To so, overcome. So, yeah, um, that's been a real positive. And then, yeah, as I said, now I've got a fresh start and, um, yeah, I, I couldn't be more motivated and um, Wanting to train hard and mm. and um, improve and, and get better every day is, is something I'm looking forward to. There's um I feel like there's nothing worse than when you're in those environments, professional environments that are team structured and reliant on coaches selecting you, when a coach doesn't speak to you. Like for me, that's the worst. That's when you know something's wrong. Like if if you're not get, if you're not playing but they're still talking to you, then okay. But when they're not speaking, that's when it's like fuck. You know, yeah, you know, yeah. and I've I've been there, mate. So I know how hard that is. So, but it's funny you talk about this and people hearing this perspective, right? From Luke Dunstan. Luke Dunstan, you played twelve games this year and had eleven Brownlow votes. <laughs> like, are we are we living in a world where why is he not still at St Kilda? Why are we not playing him? The second highest Brownlow votes after Jack Steele, who was just immense this year. So, it amazes me as much as it <laughs> maybe amazes you. Oh, I've I've actually had to apologise to Steely for um, <laughs> stealing some of them. For trying to, yeah, I. I I didn't intend to, Jack. So, um, <laughs> yeah. I have apologised, but it was a bit of a yeah, a bit of a light heart. Mate, well, look, I think it's testament to you that, based off what you're saying, that you're still able to perform, like you touched on. But I mean, obviously, there was a bit of a, a sour end for you, which we'll, we'll talk about a little bit. But for, for just holistically, I mean, how do you look back on your time at the Saints? You obviously came in as a young kid. Now you're leaving as a man. Like, what what what's your sort of you know perspective on that? Um, no, the thing I just think about is that I've met so many amazing people over my time there that like I, I'm I'm not sour in any way like I I still have really close friends that are at the club which I'm going to obviously you know keep those relationships but players that are no longer at the clubs um and and that I've you know crossed paths with it's yeah it's I've been very lucky and um yeah very grateful for the opportunity mate pretty cool if I always actually wanted to know as well I mean you came in wearing the number 36 I think year two, they gave you number seven. Yeah. <laughs> Which, I mean, for those that know yeah. the number seven in St Kilda, Lenny Hayes, I mean, there's a bit of weight on that jersey. Like, did that ever phase you? Did you did you grab that? Like, was what, what was that? Because I always think, like, wearing seven, 12, 35 at St Kilda, the, the great legends of the club, it's a fucking bit of, bit of weight on that, a bit of pressure. Yeah, it's a hard one. I've never probably really... Sat down to like think about. It's also quite probably honourable too. Like, yeah, like. yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was. I remember when it happened. Um, at the it was the last game of the season, and as I said, I'd had a um, shoulder rico. So they've the last game of the season was in Adelaide, and uh, they'd asked me to come to the game and be in the rooms and whatever um, before and after the games, and I didn't really know why because. I'd already just gone home um, mm. to spend a bit of time with family. And then um, I sort of got wind of it, that it might have been happening. And um, I think in the lead up, Lenny might have even spoken to me about it, but it was his last game and he was retiring. Um, oh, so you crossed over with a year with Lenny. So, yeah, we, yeah, we had a year together. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, and then he sort of asked me the question. And, um, yeah, it was obviously a massive honour and very grateful, but... At time, yeah. At times, I I don't know. I, I definitely wouldn't say I regret it, but I mean, I see some of the things that fans have, you know, said. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing though, because like, and it's not. There's nothing, um, like the way the fans view it. Do you, when I when I ask that, and the reason why I ask that is because the natural view is they just compare you to Lenny, 
yeah, you're never yeah. going to be Lenny. You're always going to be Luke Dunstan, whether you're better than what Lenny's career was or not. Like, you're going to be a different player. Yeah. But you'll always be compared to that. So it's like, it's like that's why I think is, is it frustrating for you in a sense? Um, oh, no, nah, I, I'd never say frustrating, but it, it, it probably just like if I had my time and looked back on how it's actually gone, um, taking that on was a bit, yeah, it was a massive thing. And obviously I probably was never going to live up to what Lenny was able to achieve. So yeah. it's a hard one. But, I, I, you know, I've got, I've still got, <laughs> funny story, Lenny uh, Lenny left me when, when he finished up. And I, as I said, I was already back home. So he he went through the lockers and cleaned out his locker. And then there was obviously the handover. When I went back in day one of preseason the next year, um, he'd left his Guernsey, his pair of lucky jocks <laughs> hanging on uh, the hook in the locker and uh, a little personal note in the locker, which was unfortunate because then we then moved from Seaford back to Moorabbin. So right. that, that message is still sitting in the locker in Seaford that I haven't seen in four years. <laughs> oh, so, wow. Well. Um, yeah, there were, I, I think I did ask at the time of when we moved if I could get it cut out or whatever, but wasn't, wasn't What, what happen, did the so. message say? Was it just... Uh, no, nah, it was just you, a bit of a joke. <laughs> it was just a bit of a joke. Something. But that's old, pretty cool. So old like... fellow was here. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, hope it, I hope it was. I hope it's as good to you as it was to me. Um, and then signed off. So. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's it was pretty awesome, and um, I still yeah speak to Lenny every now and then, and um, he's off in Sydney now and doing yeah. his thing and whatever with his family. But um, yeah, pretty cool. I've, as I said, I've still got. That jumper and those jocks and I'm waiting when I'll probably finish my career and whatever, I'll I'll get him framed and um, put into a room somewhere. That's, that's amazing, mate. So, he's, yeah. he's a superstar. Speaking of, like, superstars, for you, was there ever, like, a, a standout player, past or present in your time there that you just, like, this bloke's a cut above or, like, they're just so elite? Like, anyone that sticks out for you? Yeah, the one, uh, the one is probably obviously Rui. Yeah. Um, just... Yeah, being able to watch him was was pretty cool, and with how hard he worked and how well uh, he looked after his body, like he was squeezing extra years out of his career just through yeah. just through professionalism. So um, yeah, it was it was pretty amazing to watch him and to say I have played with him, like it's another cool thing. Yeah, I'm sure it's when I crazy when I finish and say I played with uh, Nick Rewalt to the grandkids or whatever, yeah. <laughs> that'd be pretty cool. That's um like it, yeah I can imagine was for, for him though with his like because obviously he had ability and stuff, but is it was there little things that he did that for, like, young guys around that were just like, okay, well, they're the things that I've got to start doing. Did that rub off on, on the other younger players coming through? Yeah, uh, yeah, certainly. Yeah. Um, as I touched on, like, his professionalism and the way he'd get his body up for each game, um, for, yeah, for the young guys to be able to see that was, yeah, pretty awesome. Um, the one flag voodoo, and, and we are going to go on to the Demons and, and obviously a bit more about, about yourself, but just just from um, Saints fans, so I've been a bit <laughs> yeah, drenched no, no. in sorrow here, mate. <laughs> I haven't seen a flag, nor is, my, nor is my dad. But the one flag voodoo, uh, from an external and a fan point of view, obviously it's well documented, but I'm just curious to know, like, inside the four walls, the club culture, does that actually play on people's mind? Do they say it doesn't, but does it? Like, do, is it there or is it not really a thing for you guys? It's like you can only control what you can. Um, yeah, to a degree. I mean, it's th like it gets spoken about and I think the thing that people keep saying is like if you're the group, if you're the group that does it, you know, you'll be immortal and yeah. know, all, all that sort of thing. So it definitely, like it gets brought up but um, it's not like used as a negative thing. Right, it's, okay. We haven't won in this long. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's obviously, it's a bit of a dangle of the carrot yeah, right. to... Um, if you can be a part of it, like it'll be pretty pretty special as yeah, yeah, yeah. you could attest coming from the Saints. <laughs> oh, mate. <laughs> but this is, must be exciting for you because you're going to a club where everyone expects you to be finals, everyone expects you to be at the pointy end of the season. So for you there must be some natural excitement because you probably haven't experienced as much as you would have liked in that space. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like, And that, that was another um, factor in going to Melbourne was obviously the – they're in the position that they are. They've just won one and they've got a, it's a very, young, young, group, very right. young group still um, who, yeah, from what I can see, all just still want to get better and improve. So, um, yeah, it's definitely exciting. And through my career so far, I haven't even played in a game of finals. So um, if that's, you know, if I'm lucky enough for that to happen, it'd be pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, for, for you, because we've spoken of, like, your consistency and for those that don't know, 
uh, Luki Dunstan's career from when he was drafted. If you look at his statistics, I think he played like 16, 17 games every year up until 2020, which not an easy thing to do. Like one, to not be injured for that long, but to be consistently playing games is it's pretty pretty special. Like when, when you look back on the last sort of year or two, like where did the breakup kind of start for you based off the fact that you you obviously came in and you, you played so well for so long? Like where for you did that sort of start to diminish? Um, I think so two seasons ago I'd, I'd played, I think I played a fair bit. I think I might have missed towards the start of the year. I missed maybe a group of three or four games and then basically I came back in for the rest of the season and, I finished seventh or eighth in the BNF that year. Um, and then the following year, which was last year, uh, I played in round one and then basically we came off after playing on a Sunday. We played north, were up by six goals. And Is this in 2020 we're talking? Yeah. yeah. 2020. And, and Friday they came back and um, I think Roe missed a shot with like a minute left. Ah, uh, yes. Um, and we lost by under a goal. We walked back into the change rooms that game and basically all got everyone was obviously pretty miserable as you can imagine and um they pulled us into the meeting room and basically said like covid's cooked the season's like off for at least eight weeks like you're going to be going oh, home no. yeah it was a bit of a bit of a <laughs> weird feeling anyway so after the break um i was dropped for the round two whenever that happened came yep. back um and we, I think I, we started playing like those scratch matches. I don't know if you heard about them. They were like unofficial games. Against the other Because the, the, VFL, the VFL wasn't running. So it was uh, basically okay. like you would match up with whoever you play in the AFL. You'd play their seconds essentially. Okay. Um, so I played in maybe one or two of those. And um, the second one I tore my pec and had to get surgery. And I missed basically the whole year and just came back. I was able to come back and play like one or two scratches um, mm. be- just before the boys got back to finals. I think I was back available like one week to go. And then um, obviously, yeah, they were playing good footy and I didn't get in. Um, and then that was like the off-season. Then we got, I think, Creachi came across that off-season. Right, from the Crows. Um, from the Crows. And I almost, I, yeah, I almost left the Saints that year. In just that off season, pr- but presuming you weren't going to play yeah, much, yeah, like not yeah. did they they wouldn't giving you that sentiment? You just done the math there, yeah, or? yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it was it was just putting crossing the you yeah, know putting yeah. the dots together, but yeah, um, yep, yep. Yeah, we nearly had something done, and then that that broke down sort of last minute, and um, then when I knew I was going to be coming back, like I obviously knew, as I said to you, like I'm probably not going to be playing as playing, much. So, um, was that I guess, I guess that's where it started, like 2020. Yeah, um, I got dropped for round two and then got injured, so it was a bit of a cooked year. Do they do like does the club like the coach rats and stuff? Do they communicate that stuff with you, or are you just seeing the trades come in with all these like stack midfielders and yeah, you're yeah, just no. pres- you're just like okay, well this is this is happening. Yeah, yeah. Is it just like no, that? I mean, yeah, you get a feel. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're not an idiot. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's crazy, man. So, um, like. Just based off the season you had, I mean, were you? I know your mind, you kind of had clarity you were going to be gone, but, like, was there ever sort of, you know, that the communication between you and the coaches or the coaches that just sort of died down, like, and, and you kind of just like, well, I'm not valued here, I need to go? Or was it just in your head you just felt ready for a change anyway? Um, yeah, there, oh, there was maybe a little bit of that, but it was more like I said to you, I, I didn't really have a lot of motivation to... Mm want to get better and improve, which, like, when you stop getting that, that's yeah, not, not a good sign. And then um, I think just with the change of scenery, like, I'd, I'd probably gotten used to it, a bit too comfortable in the same environment for so long, and it just becomes a bit stale. So, yeah. Um, yeah, just the opportunity to go, like, anywhere and get a fresh start um, and basically just a new environment. It's um, crazy. Yeah, it's been... Very reju- rejuvenating. Yeah, I can imagine. And it's funny because the Saints have, like, my, anyone know, watches and killed it. We've got a gun midfield. But I think probably you've arguably gone to the best midfield in the country. Like, I mean, we know we've got the Bulldogs that are pretty stacked, but the Demons, like, Oliver, Petraka, Gorn, uh, Viney, like, that just must be awesome. Like, for you to link up with them, that must naturally just rejuvenate you, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm looking forward to um, being able to train with those guys and, like, I came into the club 
to do a weight session with the um, fitness guy like a week after they'd gotten back. Yeah. And Petraka was in the gym like <laughs> You're throw, joking. throwing these weights around. I was like, fucking. No way. So um, After he's just had 40 so yeah, and won a flag. and won, won the Norm Smith, won a yeah. flag. And like a week later he was back in the gym training. Um, so that for me, like straight away seeing that was, was pretty cool. Um, and then, yeah, just, just the way all the boys have been attacking – their training and I've started um, going with Gussie Brayshaw and Gorney. Um, we're all in a similar area and running um, around Bentley and a few of those spots, Bayside, but going to his mate's um, gym at Pulse 8 afterwards. Oh. We started that up last week. Honestly, the hardest thing, really? 40 minutes of my life. Like We're on our deathbed last Friday, Arvo. Um, but yeah, we've started doing that and like just to be doing something different and, and all that sort of thing, like it's it's been awesome. Do so. you see a shift like given what they've won and where they're at, do you naturally coming from the Saints where we obviously had, didn't have the greatest year, do you just see like a shift in mentality in those blokes or like an energy that's just – or are they, are they doing what anyone would normally do anyway? Uh, no, well, I mean like they're just doing their program and what they're – Right, so the clubs, do, this but... is what the club's putting on them kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I mean it's just – probably a bit like it's more exciting for me because it's new yeah as i said um you're, you're running I've, with blokes that have won a flag and i've <laughs> got yeah i've got some motivation like they've poor guys that they've been getting hassled everywhere they're running by <laughs> i the can imagine general public um so yeah it's it's been cool to see that and um i think they're all just really motivated to obviously they didn't have the opportunity to do it in melbourne but yeah they were over in perth and um yeah i think they're all just excited by the fact that if they were able to do it in melbourne it'd be even bigger so did um one thing you spoke of actually one of your first interviews with the demons I saw like a, a sort of draw card for you is obviously all the things you've stated but um they saw areas for you to improve your game and like you know identified some areas that you could develop and and obviously push the team or, or support a role for the club what what were some of those things that they sort of identified for you or even you identified in yourself you want to get better at um yeah well the thing I mean it's been well documented I want to get better at my kicking and um yeah. that was that was the knock at St Kilda and um, I've yeah, I've already started putting a bit of a plan in place, which like, and as I said, this is because I'm motivated and, and now I'm in a new environment. I want to get better, mm. but if I was to stay at the Saints, like I probably wouldn't have put that plan in place. If That's that makes crazy. sense, yeah. so like, with, just with where I was at, like I, I just wasn't motivated. So, yeah. um, so yeah, I, I mean, I've started doing that, um, and they sort of spoke about having just a real focus on your strengths, um which excites me as well. I yeah. Think. Was um, you played a lot of your footy under Alan Richardson. I think m- pretty much was Richo and Bratz, are they the only two coaches you've had? Yeah. 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 So, so but, yeah, Richo came in the year I was drafted. Right, okay. Yeah. Was he, is he working out the Demons now, isn't he? Was yeah. that Was that a draw card for you as well? Was he someone that got in touch? And Yeah, yeah, he I called was, me, he actually he, he called, called me on my way home from golf um, <laughs> that day, which I spoke about. Yeah, we had a quick chat and... Um, yeah, I I can't thank him enough, and um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to being able to work hard for him. It's exciting because he, you played some of your best years of footy under him, so it must be nice to go. I think it's always good to play where you wanted, right? But like when you have people like that, you've got a good history with. It must just give you like a good feeling about the place as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for you've touched on. Um, your work with Emma Murray, which actually I just wanted to go into because I find this interesting and, and we actually spoke off air like probably when I finished up playing soccer and you came into the system, there wasn't really much like sort of push towards that space or, you know, you know, looking at yourself beyond a footy player exactly. Uh, how have you sort of utilised her and what's that kind of given you back maybe just day-to-day life or life balance? Like what, what's sort of the benefits you found of spending some time with her? Who's um, a sports psychologist for, for everyone that doesn't know and, and listening in? Yeah, yeah. So I was, yeah, I was lucky enough to cross paths with her when the Saints did employ her, maybe th- oh, three or four years ago, I think it was. Um, and yeah, we just hit it off. And as I said, that was sort of the, around the time that I'd been dropped for the first time, and I was working through all that. Um, so just to be able to have a really good connection with her and um, like a family of amazing people, awesome people, and I've become friends with all of them, and um, and that's great. But f- it was probably just like a little bit from a personal side of things but then also like performance um mm. you would just have so much clarity going into a game and into a session what you wanted to get out of it and that's fascinating and man. what you needed to do so she kind of did in a way like strip things back and just um give you just simple focus points because 
like you, if you've got 10 things to worry about, you're not going to be able to do one of them. So It's f- interesting was- you say this because Jordy Degoe was on the other week and he said, because he had a lot of stuff stuff going on this year and he was like, he was going into game days like so clear and comfortable with, with a lot of the work he was doing with a similar type person, Jackie Lauder. So it's pretty crazy how you say the same thing. Cause like, yeah, yeah. And I think like you, you go through a process with her to actually like find out what those things are that you need to focus on. Like I've got my trigger, you call them mental triggers or whatever, but yeah. I've I've got those things. And then if you've got those three things front of mind, the rest of it sort of just comes and, and, and you can sort of just play a bit more freely, which sort of what you do when you're a young fella and you yeah, come in, you're right. 18 years old and you're just playing on instinct. So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, to be able to get an element of that back is good um, while still knowing all the structure and game plan and all that because yeah. I think that's what, gets taken out of kids is because they get coached so heavily then yeah. they actually lose a bit of like the flair come and a bit robotic right yeah which i think is is now good in the game i think the guys that have been drafted like the last couple of years i think that's now being is actually like a focus for right. them to ha- like go play on instinct awesome. we don't care if you stuff up sort of yeah. thing so yeah. Do, are they some of the things you'd fall back on like through the tougher times are there some of those things you just mentioned like if, if you're going through some stuff on on the field getting dropped or whatever like is that the stuff you'd instantly turn to to get back up and and sort of stay focused for you um yeah well if like it, it wouldn't change it wouldn't matter if i was playing friday night yeah on the mcg or if i was playing in the wet and cold at sandy <laughs> yeah. i would still have basically the same focuses going into a game yeah um knowing what i needed to do so right okay now I, I want to get to know a bit of you off the field because I know you play golf, as you mentioned. I know you love, you know, I love it. Don't mind a cocktail at Cocoon Beach Club in Bali. But, I mean, <laughs> what, what sort of keeps you uh, yeah. what sort of keeps you interested off the field? Because you obviously, I know you're a defined as an AFL player and you're training every day and playing every week. But realistically, you've, you've got a lot of alone time, a lot of downtime. Like, how do you keep yourself busy? Well, I mean, it's been pretty hard during COVID. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine, right? Yeah. Uh, but I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm no good at golf. I'm off, <laughs> I'm playing off 18 or something. I'm terrible. <laughs> All right, okay. Um, but I, I just love being able to, uh, and especially probably since COVID, yeah. being able to get out, and walk around, and yeah. be out of the house for four hours. So, um, it's good to, yeah, get out there, have a bit of a yarn with with your mates, and hang a bit of shit on them about spraying them probably further right than I did. <laughs> um, but no, recently, I think it was this, just before the start of COVID. It's coming up in a week, actually. My dog's second birthday. Oh, right. a, um German Shepherd, and he obviously took up a fair bit of time. And yeah, bloody nice. Um, love him to death, but he's a bit of a menace. Um, <laughs> he's the size of a horse running around a hallway at home. So they say dogs reflect their owners. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, probably spot on. Um, he's got a big nose too, so that makes sense. <laughs> uh, um, but no, uh, I, I mean, I spent a fair bit of time with the dog. Um, over the last couple of years, I'm not a. I, I was gaming for a while, but I haven't touched my PlayStation since we got to Noosa a, a year and a half, nearly two years oh, ago. Right, okay. Um, haven't picked it back up. The boys were mucking around playing FIFA and having a fair bit of fun while we we're up in the hub. Yeah, um, I can imagine. But yeah, having sort of, I've put that away. Um, and then yeah, met a girl at the start of this year as well, and. Um, that's locked taken up, up a fair bit of time. Yeah, in COVID they do relationships. Well. Yeah. <laughs> They're locked up in the same same place. You can't go anywhere, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so no, that's that's all going well, and yeah, just looking forward to hopefully being able to get home and um, yeah, spend a bit of time with family. It's been a fair while between drinks with them. So I can imagine. Um, yeah, with any luck, I'll be able to get back to SA. But for Christmas, that'll be the goal if they lift those border restrictions. Yeah. Um, do you have uh, – we touched on this, right, because I know you've played with a lot of teammates that, you know, have been good good footy players even now, some of the some of the blokes that are getting delisted or traded around the leagues that you've probably experienced, you know, a relationship with. Um, like all of a sudden they're, they're in we, – we spoke of off air, like the structured environments and then you're kind of in the abyss of like what, what's going on now, which you've experienced, but not everyone's going to land a club. Do you have a – a view yet of like life after footy have, as you started sort of pondering there to like think of how you're going to keep yourself busy, other passions or interests in that space? Yeah, I certainly have. And like it's probably, uh, as I said earlier, like it's become a bit more of a reality um, this off season, knowing that I was finishing up at the Saints and yeah. still had the unknown, like didn't know what was going to happen. Um, so yeah, become a bit more of a reality then. But I, during, it was a few years ago now, but did a Cert 3 in Carpentry um, with a few of the other boys and last just last Thursday actually I've, I've 
um, caught up with Sammy Gilbert, who yeah, used to play the Saints, Saints um, a few times over the off season, um, just to have a chat and whatever. And he sort of brought up going to do one day a week with him. He's at um, Balmain and Co, a construction company. Okay. Um, and he's he's a site manager, so they've yeah they've been kind enough to put me on one day a week at the moment. And, oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah, sort of just getting a feel for what Sam's role is and um, how the how the business all sort of works and, and all that on site. So, um, yeah, that's definitely an interest of mine and it's been, um, yeah, it's been good to, to see what they get up to. Mate, awesome. I'll tell you what, uh, for those listening, Lukey Dunstan, he's a great bloke, a star off the field and I think the Melbourne Demons have got a good one here, honestly. i played 120 games for the St Kilda and the Saints, I'm going to be questioning that trade for a long time. Um but, mate, I just want to say thank you for coming on the show. Like, it's been an absolute blast and really great to hear your story. And I think the year you had this year, considering all the things you said, is actually remarkable. So, mate, if you can get through that, I think uh, you're going to have a great time at the Demons. And, um, mate, good to hear you're rejuvenated, that's for sure. <laughs> thank you. That's good. Thanks for having me. No worries. Pleasure.